Okay, so we have just finished up our high resolution surface detail sculpting on our falling block mesh here. So the next step we want to talk about is how to transfer this detail from our high resolution sculpt to our game ready optimized uh, low poly uh, mesh. So the first step that we need to perform in order to transfer this detail onto our lower resolution mesh that we created via the retopology process, the first step that we need to do is to UV unwrap this model. Now we talked a little bit about UVs when we did our tile set pieces. However, we didn't have to do any UV unwrapping because in Blender, by default, any new mesh primitive you add to your scene, such as the plane, which was the basis for our tile set, any new mesh primitive you add will automatically have UVs already assigned to it because they're fairly simple objects. So if I have just added this plane to my scene, when I look at the UVs of this plane, we can see that it is fully unwrapped across the zero to one UV space. Now that is all well and good for primitives, but for more complex forms, such as our piece here, uh, we need to manually assign the UVs. So I'm gonna come into my modifiers tab here, and here you can see that this is the piece that I sculpted directly on uh, because it has the multi-res modifier here. So this is the highest level of detail we have for this piece. Now, luckily, because we used a multi-res modifier, uh, the low poly information is still retained on this model. So all we have to do here is we're going to change the le uh, excuse me the viewport level from six to zero to look at the lowest level of subdivision for this piece. So this is actually the level of detail we are going to be bringing into the game, but we need to just like we did for the tile sets, we need to bake a normal map. Uh, in order to transfer those high resolution details. However, if I were to tab to come into edit mode for this piece and press A on my keyboard to select all, you can see that the UVs here are not quite right and any baking we do, any normal map baking or ambient occlusion baking will not appear correctly because we do not have our UVs properly set up. So when dealing with a more complex form, you need to manually tell Blender or whatever program you are using where you want to make cuts into your UVs. So these cuts are called seams appropriately enough because when you lay them out flat here, they will be separated on the edge where you assign seams. So typically you want to assign seams in areas of like crevices or sharp angles and um, you also want to hide them for the most part from the viewer because there is a small chance that when you have a texture applied, if there is a seam going across like the center of the face, for example, there is a small chance that it will be visible once the textures are applied. So where and how many seams to place is sort of something you learn via experience but um, I'm just gonna go ahead and show you how I would unwrap a model such as this one. So um, the general rule for anything with a face is that you don't really want too many seams in the center of the face because that is where the viewer's focus will be. So for a piece like this, I would typically try to put the seams more towards the back of the head. So let's just see what this looks like if I try to unwrap this with no seams. So to unwrap a mesh object's UVs, all you have to do is hover over the 3D viewport. And then it is important that you have what you wish to unwrap selected. So I currently have everything selected. So it will try to unwrap this entire mesh at once when I press U on the keyboard and just select unwrap. So this is my unwrap result in the uh, left hand side on the UV editing side. And as you can see, it is um, really not ideal. This is the entirety of the face here and it's sort of stretched in odd ways. 
because there are no seams, so it's trying to un unwrap a closed object without any cuts in it, which is not really possible to do. So um, we can visualize the distortion here if you're not ever not sure about uh, whether your wrap is good or not. We can visualize the distortion here in a number of ways. The first way is to come over to the UV editing side when you're in the UV editing workspace, of course, and to come down to your, uh, your viewport overlays here and just to enable this uh, display stretch I, or display stretch checkbox right here. So what this will do is it will render your UV islands in uh, a solid color and dark blue is for areas of no stretch. So if I zoom way in here, a few of these faces are not being distorted at all as you can see from the dark blue. And the closer we move towards red um, into this sort of yellow section, the more distortion we have in our faces. The other way to uh, visualize distortion is to put a UV grid onto your mesh here. So the way that we would do that is essentially we would just come up onto the UV editing side here and select new. Um, give this image a title such as UV grid. Uh, 1024 is totally fine. Um, the important thing that you change is this generated type. You want to change it from blank to UV grid. Just select OK. So the texture that has been created is displayed right here on the left. So this is what is called a UV grid. It is essentially just a checkerboard pattern um, that is laid flat in zero to one UV space. Now, how this is useful is when you apply it to your mesh. So I'm gonna change my viewport shading to material preview by clicking this material icon here. And then I'm gonna come down into the materials tab I'm gonna create a new material. I'm just gonna name it UV grid. And uh, for the base color here, um, we can change it from a solid white to an image texture. And we can select our UV grid. So this is showing currently how this texture would be displayed on the model with its current UVs. And as you can see, it's a mess, basically. Um, we can't see discern any sort of grid pattern at all, so we know that these UVs are not going to work for our purposes. So um, let's talk about uh, where we would want to put seams on this. So marking seams for a mesh must be done in edit mode. So let's just press tab to come into edit mode first. Uh, we can also, we, you can leave up the display stretch if you want, but I like to be able to see the background, so I'm going to disable it for now. So where I would put seams in this is I would focus them towards the back, and um, you want to think about seams as being relief cuts for stretching a flat image or like wrapping paper around your object. So let's just start by selecting an edge here. I am in edge select mode. So I'm going to select an edge here and I'm going to come over to so like this edge represents the start of my selection and I want to come over to where I want my selection to end, which is going to be right here on the mirrored part of it. I'm going to hold control on the keyboard and click. And what that will do is what it will select the shortest path between those two selections. So uh, Blender looked at my model and said the shortest path between that point and that point is just this straight line and it selected everything in between. So once you have a selection made of several edges, what you can do is in edge select mode again, right click and come down here to mark seam. <clears throat> now all this has done so far is it has highlighted this edge in red if we click away from it. But what we we can see what it does if we uh, select our mesh again. Um, I'm just selecting every face on here by pressing A, pressing U on the keyboard and selecting unwrap. So now you'll see we have a very different result here based on just this singular seam alone. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to go over this to show you how I would place seams on this. But basically the goal of this is to get this checkerboard to display um, all its its checkers 
as relatively the same size and um, not having a lot of distortion like we are seeing right now with these very large checkers in the front and these very small ones in the back. So we're just going to start adding seams and unwrapping until we get a more uniform result. So I might select this face and come down to here, mark seam and unwrap it. Already we're getting less stretching over here. I'm gonna come across the top here Mark seam. All right. So I think I want to separate the very bottom of this. So I'm going to press Alt and select this edge to select everything that it can detect as an edge loop. So that selects just this front piece right here because we have a triangle here. So um, just one note when you're holding down Alt and make and selecting edge loops. Um, Blender will only be able to detect to the nearest triangle. It's looking for uh, quadrilateral faces that are adjacent to each other. So we can just mark this as a seam and then come on the other side and hold Alt to select this next section, mark seam, and I'm just going to do that all the way around. Okay, so let's see what this result looks like if we highlight everything and unwrap it. Okay, so already we're getting a lot less distortion, so let's just continue until this is fully unwrapped. And for symmetrical meshes such as this one, I try to keep the seams symmetrical as well. So I've just selected this little ring around the ear here. So what I can do now to make sure that I select the exact same um, edges on this side is I can press space to bring up my search and start typing in select mirror. So if it's not perfectly symmetrical, this will fail. And I think that it failed because uh, the shrink wrap modifier I used did not, uh, did not wrap this as a perfect symmetrical mesh. Um, you know, at some point snapped to other areas. So if that's the case, you can just eyeball it. There's no uh, rule that says necessarily that your seams have to be symmetrical, but I think it just produces a little bit cleaner of a result. I missed an edge right here. So this is what I mean about the seams being somewhat noticeable. If you can imagine that this is your final like stone surface texture, um, you can also visualize the seams with the checkerboard here. So, you know, you wouldn't necessarily want a seam running directly across the face because that is the focal point for this mesh because you'll see that sometimes where they join up, they don't join up exactly, you know, aligned and they are visible. So I think that is sufficient for the purposes that we need this for. So um, I'm going to call it here. I'm kind of panning around here and I'm not noticing any large um, scale changes in my texture. I do have some of these sort of bending and bowing in here. And that is just because this is not a form that uses a lot of straight uh, planes or 90 degree angles. It is more rounded, more organic. So you will get some um, bending and stretching like this here. Um, th this is okay. It's more important that you get the overall scale of the texture uniform across the entire piece. So um, I'm going to take a break here and when we come back we're going to talk about how to bake our normal maps and our AO maps for this piece.